It's like a cozy scene to be sitting here. Can you hear the background of her? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to another session with Little Wolf Knits. Today is session 26, and it is Monday, January 8th. You cannot see it outside, but there is snow everywhere. It is so beautiful. It is melting quickly. Um, but it's such like a cozy scene to be sitting here. Can you hear the background of her? <laughs> it is such a cozy scene to be sitting here for session 26 of the Little Wolf Knits podcast. Like I said, I am Brianna and I am the dyer, designer, and human behind the Little Wolf Knits. And we are coming to you just one week after recording our last episode and I am so proud of myself but also so excited to be hanging out with you yet again if you're coming back and if this is your first time hit the pause button right now go back and watch the last few sessions of this podcast so you can see what I've been up to what I've been working on lately but if you're returning you would never know it's only been a week because there's so much stuff all around me that we're going to talk about today and I cannot wait. Okay, first, let's talk about what I'm wearing because I am the coziest human and I've been living in this sweater. It is a design of mine. It is the bonfire sweater and it has the coolest. I mean, just like look at it. The shape is so cool. It's like this. Let's see, can you, oh yeah. It's like this really cool drop shoulder, top down. It's really cool the way you work on the increases. Here it's actually contiguous, I believe, sweater. Um, and then it has this really cute balloon sleeve. And the sleeve has these awesome brioche details. Um, and they reverse. So this one has the CC as the first color as this one does. And then this one is the opposite. So it's just a little pop of color. It's kind of sporty, but kind of classy. A perfect, perfect project. If you have never worked brioche before, but you are dying to try. I know so many of my testers, I want to say upwards of five had never done brioche before, but it is about one inch of brioche at a time, a few rows of brioche at a time. There's no increasing, there's no decreasing, it's just straight brioche. And the pattern says, throw in a lifeline, try the brioche. If you mess up, you have a lifeline, try and fix it. If you can't fix it, file back, start over. And my testers were in love, I was in love. It is a the coziest sweater I own for sure. And it feels like I'm wearing a sweatshirt, but I get the look of looking like I have on a nice sweater. So I love it. This is my glazed colorway from the donut collection. And this is Sunfish and Bowie held double. And then this CC, you could see right there, is old fashioned, again, from the donut collection. I love this sweater so much. Um, and a lot of people love it too. I think this is going to be one of my top makes, not like personally, but I think my shop, um, this pattern has been selling a lot and I'm assuming it's for the cozy peaks and cheeks mouth. So let's jump into admin and just talk about a few things at the front end. Um, so you don't have to wait until the end basically. <laughs> okay. Just a few admin things. Like I said, the Cozy Peaks and Cheeks Mal is in full swing. It started the last day of December and it is running until March 31st of this year. Basically, garment mal, but also anything that is meant to cover your peaks or your cheeks down below. Um, so things like sweaters, pants, dresses, skirts, blankets. I'll even give you ponchos, vests. Um, 
Did I miss some big ones? I don't think so. Um, as long as you can justify it, it belongs in the mail. Use the hashtag Cozy Peaks and Cheeks Mail 2024 on Instagram. And if you start and finish a project during the time frame of the mail, using my yarn for another pattern or using one of my patterns or a combination of both, you can submit a Google form that's linked in my Instagram bio for an opportunity to win an extra prize. So I will be pulling participation prizes from Instagram, although pulling from Instagram hashtags is not so much fun. So if you're using my yarn or my patterns, make sure you're filling out that Google form. And then my Wolfpack members are getting additional prizes in there. And we have a chatter thread and an FO thread. And it's so fun to see what everyone is working on. And I know a lot of people are working on the bonfire sweater. And I am so excited. Um, yes, so excited. Admin things. What else is going on? There is a sale going on in my shop. I don't know if I said this last time. I, I had it be for my Wolfpack and for my newsletter subscribers, but now that the first week is over, they got first dibs at everything they wanted, I'm going to extend this sale and open it up to y'all here on YouTube, if I haven't already, and on Instagram, 25% off all in stock, ready to ship yarn. This is the biggest sale I have ever done on yarn, 25%. That's crazy. Um, using the code new year, new yarn, super fun. There's so much good ready to ship yarn and I cannot wait to see what y'all create or from some of your orders there that are coming in. And there's some really fun fades. It looks like coordinating colors, maybe for garments, maybe for shawls. I'm just guessing, uh, maybe just for a lot of socks, but that's really cool. So like I said, 25% off ready to ship yarn. New year, new yarn. And I don't remember if it's 10% or 20%. There's a sale on all of my patterns, both on my website and on Ravelry with the code COZY2024. So if you like the bonfire sweater and you want to grab the pattern, you can grab it now and use that code to get a discount. I'm not sure when I'll run those through at least one week. Um, so you'll still have a little bit of time. So through next Monday, the 15th, but potentially even longer. See how generous I'm feeling <laughs> and how much is left on the shelf, honestly. Um, so those are the big admin things. Um, I will save yarny things until the end, until after I talk about FOs and whips. I don't know. We're changing it up. We're exploring what we like on this podcast. If you have things that you like or an order that makes sense to you um, or that I've done before and you like better, let me know below and your feedback will be considered. Um, let's jump into finished objects because I have a few. Even though it's only been a week, there are a few finished objects. Okay. First, let's start with the one that was closest to being done but still needed a good amount of work. CJ's sweater, <laughs> sweatshirt is so stinking cute. It has a hood, it has a drawstring. This is the Mini Montrealer by Designs by Dell, and I cannot wait to block it and give it to him. I actually took it home this weekend to give it to him, but he was busy and out of town, so I didn't get to give it to him, so I said, this is better, I'll bring it home, I'll block it, and then I'll give it to him. <laughs> another weekend. So this is my yarn. The gray is fog on my 420 base and this navy is a misfit of night sky on my 420 base. You can see I modified the pattern a little bit. I only did four stripes. I wanted to match Michael's sweatshirt that I made him, the not mini Montrealer, several years ago and I think I did five stripes on his. I'm really glad I only did four on CJ's and then I added this pop of color um, for the pocket finishing. I don't know what this is called. Um, and I ended up going with the gray hood trim and the gray drawstring. And I'm so glad I did it that way. I think it looks really sharp. 
It looks really professional. It doesn't look like I ran out of yarn. And I didn't. I had like two grams maybe of night sky left and I finished um, my fog because I used the drawstring, used it for the drawstring. So I just did as much as I could there. And oh, <laughs> I'm so happy and excited. I can't wait to see it. I almost left it at home um, and just like dropped it off in his mailbox. But I really want to see him when he opens it because I hope he really loves it. And then I get to see that. So we'll be home in a few weekends and the plan is to get it to him then. And I'm really excited for that. That is FO number one. And I finished that on Friday of last week. I like buckled down. I was like, we're getting this done. And I was sewing up the last pocket while we were waiting to get into, Michael was like finishing packing the car to get and head to New Jersey. I sewed it up and it's so good. Okay, you see the next thing here and I'm so excited. I'm really glad this is finished, although it wasn't that close to being finished. This was my main focus last week and I'm so glad it's done. This is a new design. Um, I have called for testers and I called for testers on my wolf pack and um, my second half sweatshirt testing group. It is a very similar shape, design, fit, and I wanted to give them a chance to jump in because I know many of them cast on a second or third sweatshirt during the test. So I figured they might like a go at this one. This is my D Street Distress Sweater and this is on... Um, Oh my God, it's so squishy. This is my molasses colorway from the Cookie Collection. More on that later. I know I said this last time and I didn't give you more, but there will be more today. And this is on my Opti base. And look at the fun details on the sweater. This has a pretty, so this I think is maybe a three inch neck. This is a four inch neckline. Um, it is a pretty significant mock neck. And it has these really cool, drop stitch distress details throughout. Um, there's a big one on the side here. There's some on the sleeve. Uh, there's more over here. And this is my favorite. It's just so cool. It's so squishy. It's such a great fit. Very similar to this, but um, constructed just a little bit differently but again top down drop shoulder this is a quite oversized a little bit more cropped and i am obsessed obsessed so this will be coming in february that is the plan i will be wearing it lots before then but if you're excited for this one Get your yarn ready because February is coming and it worked up so quickly. I ended up going into my fourth skein of yarn on this, although I could have ended it and kept it really cropped. I wanted a longer crop that I could wear with jeans without my entire stomach being out. And I'm so, so, so obsessed with this, the drape, the look. It's just so cool. I wasn't sure if it'd be boring or not fun enough, but I really, really am loving this one. So that was FO number two. I need to find chapstick. My lips are so dry, which means I am dehydrated. Please hold. Okay. I found it. And we're good to go. It's actually in the bag right in front of me. Um, I always have at least one chapstick in a project bag, um, but I finished a lot of things, started some new things, flipped over bags, and I wasn't sure where it was, but it was right here, so we we're good to go. The rest of my FOs are spinning related. Some of them I wasn't even sure if I was going to show, so I'm not going to talk about them too much, but some of them are just these mini little skeins of yarn. And this means I am testing out fibers for the shop. Some of them are spun and undyed. Some of them 
I will be dying if I like how it spins. I'm not even going to bother dying it if I don't like how it's spinning up. So this is a superwash fine merino that's very nice. I'm not sure about the fineness or if I want something a little bit more, not rustic because it's still merino, it is very soft, but I feel like the superwash and the fine made it a little slippery. But the finished product, product is really nice, so we'll see. And I just finished plying up on my carry cherry spindle bobbin or bobbin spindle, my cherry cherry bobbin spindle. Um, you can't even see it. Let's see. Um, I just chain plied a superwash merino fiber, not fine. So I think that's 19.5 microns. This is 22 microns very small difference like I don't even I don't it was not very noticeable to me and it was a little less slippery so I'm thinking that this is the fiber we're going to go with but I just finished buying this so I'm going to let it rest then I'm going to put it put it on my nitty knotty I'm going to soak them test them out and try a bunch more fibers um that are in here You'll see these in, in the whip section. So there's in the whip section. Brianna, calm down. Um, last, F-O-esque. I'm calling this an F-O because this bobbin is finished, but the spin is not finished. These are singles. Did you hear that? I'm listening to a lot of true crime podcasts lately, and they are turning me into a scaredy cat. I think it might have been the crock pot that I have going. It just scared me. Anyway, this bobbin is done. This is just a bobbin from my Hansen Pro e-spinner, but this fiber is a single of my melanated boho bay fiber that I have been spinning for a little bit of time now, and I finally spin up half of it. That will be half of my fractal ply. Mm -mm -mm. Very cool. Um, and you'll see what the rest of it is looking at in the whip section. So I will call this a an FO because I want to. And it's not, it's done. Now it's just going to sit and wait for the rest of the things. And spinning takes a long time and I don't want to wait until it's a finished skein before I call it because that would take forever. But last FO. Okay, now let's look at what I'm working on because I have started one, two, two new projects that you have not even seen yet. Okay, project number one. Let's talk about the thing I started first. Funny, I have actually, so let me show you, this is in a Snickle and Mr. B bag from last year or the year before. Um, let me see, her tag is so stinking cute. Snickle and Mr. B. And I thought I, I, I did start this during Vlogmas. And then I realized when I went to pick it up that I had done it wrong, ended up frogging it and starting again. So this is completely new, um, although I thought it wasn't going to be. But this is my Radvent cardigan that I'm making with my Cozy Posy Advent from Cozy Posy Fiber Co. Advent from 2022. Not this December, last December. And I'm trying to hack, modify the pattern basically. So what it has it is a cardigan that is worked side to side and you work all 25 colors from one sleeve and then you the other sleeve and you join them in the middle in the back. That means your sleeves look different and each half of your cardigan looks different. Depending on the fade of your advent, I think that can look fine. This fade was going from, it wasn't a gradient, it was going from one color to a totally different color. Honestly, I'd probably do this even if it was a gradient. Um, it was going from an orange fade to like a blue green fade 
and I didn't want two totally di different sleeves. So what I'm trying to do is modify the pattern so that each half of the sweater includes all 20, this was a solstice advent, so 21 colors. I pulled out one that I wasn't loving and I could pull out a second one that is a tonal when almost all of the other colorways except, yeah, all of the other colorways are variegated. That would be the last color, so it will be easy to pull out if I don't want it. Um, but let me stop chatting and show you what I got here. So here's my progress. And I decided since I'm doing totally different from what the pattern suggested, I'm going to work both halves up at the same time so that I don't, I don't get lost, basically. So I don't get lost. Um, so I have worked three colors up and these were not named, I don't believe, um, beside this main skein, which is getting blown out, but this one is called Darkest. And when I picked it up and cast on the second one in the right size needle, I was like, man, why is the other one so small? And then I was like, I started this and then I took off the needle for CJ's sweater and that was a different size needle than what I just used. So I realized the first one that I did was wrong. I frogged it and I redid it. And then I worked the first one, two, three colorways on each sleeve. And I love it so far. I have these little, this one is s'mores and this one is a piece of yellow cake because it's dessert. I don't know. Because it's like cozy and desserty. That was my theme for this project. Okay, deal with it. And these are from 17 Sweet Cherry, Sweet Cherry 17, one or the other. And man, their work is so good. Like the detail on this cake, look at the detail and the frosting. It's so good. But I wanted to show you because I have the next few colorways here caked up. I actually caked up the next like seven colorways because I wanted to play around with one skein in the fade that I wasn't sure. So we're going to be getting a bit lighter here. Going into some grays, going through the grays, and then into the oranges. That's the plan. I'm really excited and it is going by much quicker than I thought it would be going by. Um, because you don't use the full mini skein, at least I'm not for my size, um, especially not at the front of the sleeve. So these are the first three. So I have quite a bit left. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the rest of these. Um, I think I'm, I mean, I am going to wait and see how much is left of each one. Cause like I said, it will be different as time goes on. When I get to the body of the sweater, I will be using more. But the first few, I barely used any. Let's see. These are 20 gram minis. I use like six grams, seven grams, eight grams. So there's a lot of these. If I end up only having a bunch of the first few and then almost none of the others. I might just make scrappy socks for Michael. Um, I could make a scrappy muscle bra. I could make a shawl if I have a lot of yarn from all of them. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm really excited. Okay. Oh, I'm messing up my, oh man. I'm messing up my cakes. I'm putting these away and so much fun. I am using my Chiagu Red Lace interchangeable set as per usual and I'm thinking that's what I'm gonna pull out and work on as soon as I'm done recording this. Mm, I have a eucalyptus lemon tuft woolen bar in here and it is perfectly wintry and I love it. So that is whip number one. My plan is to finish this before the end of January. I would love to finish this, honestly, in the next week. At least with all the main colors and having the ribbing picked up because 
it's not taking as much yarn as I thought it was going to. I thought it was going to be about four full skeins of yarn and it's not looking like that's going to be the case. That would be really cool to have done and have one advent completely worked and out of my stash. Whip number two is my last knitting whip and it is in a bag from my friend Christina of Whiskey Girl Knits. And she made one of these bags for herself and I saw it and was like, can I have it? Can I buy it? And she gifted me one. Yeah, she is so lovely. Um, and she gave me this little wolf progress keeper. And she's a member of the wolf pack. She is amazing. I'm sending her a little something in return. But inside of it is obviously the rest of my advent skein from the Cozy Knitter. And I got a lot of this done. Although this is a whip that I started yesterday and have not worked on yet today. So this is all one day's worth of knitting. You heard me right. I am using the remainder of my Cozy Knitter 24 stripe advent skein. So about 25 grams per sock. And these are going to be a gift for someone. I don't know if they watch this. I have to ask her. She says no, but then every time I talk to her, she's like, I saw your video. But if she's watching, she knows who she is. And I have a really cute new um, wintry cookie progress keeper on there from Sucra Sucra Miniatures. And I'm using a bare yarn for the toes, the heel, and I will use it for the cuff. That's just undyed yarn for my shop, my sunfish base. Uh, I might actually finish this little bit. This was a full skein many moons ago that I used whenever I need bare yarn. So I'm thinking I will cake up another one and finish these socks. Um, this person's foot is bigger than mine. So it's cool to see how much more they got on the foot, which is why I decided to go with the white heel so they could still get six or seven stripes. Let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stripes on the foot. So I think that'll be a good fit. Maybe I will actually finish this heel when I finish recording and then just have round and round on the leg ready to go for some movie knitting or something like that. And I also have the other bit of yarn in here with another where is it? Little Progress Keeper that was gifted to me by Sucra Sucra. I think I spent a lot on her shop. So she gifted me this wintry little ghost cookie. Um, so that's a cute little matching set. So I think maybe I'll finish this heel, get that ready, just go round and round for movie knitting, and then maybe cast on the toe for the second sock. So then this is also ready for round and round foot knitting. That would be a good idea. I think I'm gonna do that. But I'm loving this. I'm hoping to have those done soon. That goal was also for the month of January, but they seem to be flying off my needles. Again, um, striping, striping socks are just like brrr, and then you're done, right? So whip number two. The rest of my whips are spinning whips. And I don't have that much to show you because there's actually nothing on either of my bobbins. But that's because I've cleared them for this and this. So I will be continuing to work on both. Um, this is in my Finch's Nest, a Finch's Nest um, little wintry bag there and it feels very appropriate for Valentine's Day although I, I won't be done I, I mean I will be done with this before Valentine's Day but I'm just like in the Valentine mood you know like ready I kind of want to decorate for Valentine's Day anyway so I have all of these tiny little fiber bumps these little bits in here that are different fibers for me to test um, and try out, spin up. I'm spinning up a portion of them onto my spindle. Some are larger, some are smaller. Some seem to be like half an ounce. 
maybe a quarter of an ounce and some are closer to an ounce. So I'm at least applying them on my spindle to see what that feels like. If I like how it spins on my spindle, I think my plan is to dye it, see how it takes dye and how that process goes, and then apply that dyed sample on my wheel. So I get a sense of how it feels to spin on a wheel, how it feels to spin on a spindle, how it feels to dye. So that's an ongoing process. Hopefully that will happen sooner rather than later. I do have some more fiber samples coming in from another wool supplier here in the States um, that doesn't have as wide of a selection. This bag is so cold. I'm like, is it wet? It's not. It's just really cold, I think. Um, they don't have as wide of a selection, so I think this had like 40 different wool samples. Um, that was like kind of overwhelming, but a small, a narrower field. So this new supplier has less options, but they span a wider range. So this had like eight different Merino options. They might have one or two, but then they have a lot of other options. Does that make sense? Anyway, that's like whip number three, I guess I'll call it. And whip number four, my Bosworth, my sad empty Bosworth spindle. Just look at the char underneath. It's so cool. I love this spindle so much, so much. And I have now broken the rest of my melanated um, Boho Bay braid in half. So I can spin this and then spin this um, end to end and then end to end on one bobbin and then fractal ply this with Mm -hmm. uh, this bobbin and have a beautiful fractal spin. Hmm. I'm feeling this now because I thought this is super wash marina. I'm getting fiber on my chopstick, but it's not. It just says it's merino. And I've really been enjoying this. So I'm excited to look at, um, once I get through the rest of these superwash that I want to try out. Oh, I actually think that was the last one. Oop. Now I'm gonna try some non-superwash fibers to see which I like more. Again, if you have thoughts or ideas, I know I asked on Instagram about your fiber preferences and you are someone who might be buying fiber from the shop, drop a comment down below and let me know what you wanna see. Do you prefer a superwash or non-superwash? Do you prefer a fine merino or a regular merino? Merino is also is already really soft without being fine. Um, what about other options that aren't merino? Do we like things like a BFL, a Rambouillet, a Falkland? Um, let me know. Let me know. Because I know what I like, and ultimately, anything I sell in the shop, I want to make sure is something that I'm excited about and happy with. But um, I want to know what y'all like, too, because that's important. Okay, that was the last of my whips. Let's talk a little bit about what's in the shop. So, some things. Yarn, things that are in the shop. First, I will talk about something that's coming to the shop, but why I want to talk about it is because it's not in the shop yet, but there is a chance for you to get some. So, sometime during the month of December, I hit 14,000 followers on Instagram, which is wild. And we're almost at 2,000 followers on YouTube. So once we hit 2K on YouTube, we are definitely doing a giveaway. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe, because you can get us closer to that giveaway. But if you are on Instagram and you're following me, or if you're not following me yet, now might be the time to do so because we're doing a 14K giveaway. That will include three winners, which is really exciting. All of the details are in a reel that I made, so go check it out. But the prizes are combinations of yarn or gift cards for my shop and Progress Keepers 
like this from my friend Wendy Shop. This is a beautiful porcelain glazed progress keeper. You can't have these because they're mine, but I have a few more from Wendy that um, are available for a giveaway and lots of people want to win. So definitely make sure you're heading over to Instagram and going to enter in case you haven't already. Two more things that are in the shop. January clubs are in the shop. Super excited about that. Um, I, they're right there. Oh, let me just grab them because I'm looking at them. And we're doing things a little bit differently. I talked about it last time, but in case you didn't make it to the end of the video, our monthly clubs are no longer going to be surprises. Um, I guess unless you don't want to look and you just want to auto subscribe or just check out without even looking at the listing somehow. In case that's you, then just don't look when I'm going to show you these colorways, but I'm going to talk about them. So sorry. So the first club is the From the Open Road Club, which is where I am inspired by all photos I took, myself and my friend Manny took. Um, if you watch Vlogmas, you saw Manny and his girlfriend, Amy. Um, but uh, many years ago, starting in 2017 and then 2018, wow, that's so many years ago. Manny and I went on a few different road trips in and around North America, um, both the U.S. and Canada, a variety of things. And for the last few years, I have done a monthly club inspired by a different place I went on during that road trip. And we actually followed the route of my first road trip. We're now on the second trip we took. Um, about halfway through and it's been really fun. So this one is one of the most amazing places we went. Antelope Canyon and this colorway, oh, it's getting blown out. Um, it doesn't do it justice, but it's like layers of like peachy pink, pink, purple, orangey, this like coral. Oh, it's so good. It's so like not my palette, but my palette. I feel like if you told me, hey, do you like pink? I'd be like, no, not really. I don't like pink. I don't wear it that much. But this, <laughs> I already am using for a design. <laughs> I already figured out what design I'm going to use it for. Um, it's so good. I actually, I, I want to use it for two designs, but I want to choose just one thing. Um, and I think I know what it's going to be, but oh, it's so good. So these are all on my sunfish base, just to show you what the colorway looks like. And I am obsessed. Okay, that is club number one. Club number two is my fandom colorway. And this first quarter of the year is going to be Gilmore Girls. And this first month is going to be a moment that is pivotal for Rory. It is pivotal, I think, for Rory and Lorelai's relationship. It's a moment that I think steers Lorelai and Luke in a certain direction. It makes me have lots of big feelings that I'm not so happy with, but um, it's called Raincoats and Recipes, and it is the episode. A lot of things happen in this episode. It is the episode where Luke and Lorelai kiss. At the end? Is that the first time? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Where they get back together? It is the episode where Rory and Dean sleep together, and I have lots of big feelings, and this one is called Raincoats and Recipes, and it is beautiful layers of pinks, mauves, tans, these olive greens that are beautiful, brownie sort of mauvey spots, and then lots of mauve and brown speckles. It's beautiful, it is perfectly seasonal for like Valentine's Day and that time of year. And it's really hard because I love the colorway but I hate the moment and I don't know what to do about it but it's so good. So why do I show these to you? One, because they're both available in the shop but they're also like very lovey, very Valentine and there's a reason for that. Both of these colorways, including one more colorway, 
that I actually just dyed up again today so that you could see it in person. Um, it is called They Don't Know, and that's from Friends. So we have three different. We have a fandom from Gilmore Girls, fandom from Friends, and a travel-inspired <laughs> um, club. And all of these are available for a Valentine Day self-love box for the 2024 year. Um, and there's a pre-order open right now. You get to select which club, um, raincoats and recipes, they don't know. Maybe I'll put a picture right here. Um, or Antelope Canyon. Okay. And um, on any base that you want. And check out for a little box that you're going to get at the beginning of February for some self-love, self-care. It will include the yarn that you choose, but then some also some fun goodies that include a progress keeper and stitch marker set from Wendy that are going to be Valentine's Day theme that we came up with and I'm obsessed with them. Um, those are gonna be a surprise. Exactly what they look like is gonna be a surprise, but if you like this sort of vibe, porcelain, glaze, lightweight, beautiful. Um, it will get, a, you will get a candle from me and a bar of soap, goat milk soap. Um, I have regular and lavender, so I'm just going to maybe mix them up or I don't know if you want one, leave a note in your order if you prefer lavender or regular. And it's just going to be like a self-care. You get the box, use the soap, make a bubble bath, cast on your project use your progress keepers and like feel good all of February. And um, you can only get, I guess you can get more if you want more gifts, but the way the listing is set up is you choose one skein for the box, but all of these listings are also available so that you can order, like add individual skeins. So say you want a sweater quantity of this, but you want the box, get one skein, in the box and then just add on three or four or however many more skeins you need in one order. I'll make sure they're all dyed together and <laughs> the most perfect one. <gasps> bonfire. Oh my gosh, imagine a bonfire in this. Okay. I'm really obsessed with that colorway, clearly. Um those things are in the shop. I already talked about the yarn sale. I already talked about the pattern sale in the mound. So I think that's all we got for shop news right now. And lastly, I guess just life things. I'm trying to think of what has gone on since last Monday when I saw you. Things have been really busy with work, which is awesome. And I'll also just, I feel like I said my... <laughs> word theme for the year was ease which is definitely true and I'm trying to find balance in everything that I do so that I can approach all the things that I do with ease embrace ease and embody some of that ease into all the things that I do and it's just taking a little bit to find balance let things settle into place as my caseload builds builds as I pick up more therapy clients, as I'm doing assessment, as yarn is continuing to do well. Um, and that's what a lot of last week looked like. On Tuesday, oh, we were going to go to a movie. We we're going to go to date night. We we're going to see Wonka. And then Michael had um, his work party that I was invited to. It was really fun. So we ended up doing that on Tuesday. I was, ended up being the DD and drove. I was very responsible, um, but it was really fun to hang out with Michael and all of his friends who I don't get to see that much. Um, so that was cool. Wednesday I worked all day and Michael cooked for us. And I think we decided that Wednesday, oh, sorry, just hit the table. Wednesday is gonna be a Michael cooking night because when I'm out all day doing assessment and then come home, I just, which is like how did I used to function when I worked all day and I'm like I guess I didn't really cook at all so Michael also really enjoys cooking and wants to make sure he's getting a chance to maintain and practice that so I think that was his day he cooked dinner 
and then we ended up having a I thought we did something with the wolf pack, but that was on Monday, which we talked about. We had our book chat. And then Thursday, Michael and I rescheduled our date night and went for hibachi, so that was really fun. Um, but we'll be honest, we started watching Game of Thrones this week. I have seen it the entire thing through one time. Michael has not seen the entire thing. He has seen some pivotal moments somehow he was always around when a crazy episode was on. So he has seen like the Red Wedding and a few big moments with like Ned Stark and the entire last season of the show. So, <laughs> but he hasn't seen the whole thing. So we decided to rewatch it. And for me, it's been really cool to rewatch because there's a lot I either didn't remember or now that I know things later that I'm hearing and seeing that's really cool and he's having the same experience of knowing some things but not knowing how they came to be that way so he's getting to see that so we went for a date night and I think we had started it maybe on Monday Wednesday or Wednesday we definitely watched a lot and then on Thursday, we like went to eat, but we were like itching to get back home and watch more Game of Thrones, basically, <laughs> um, which we did. And then Friday, we went home to New Jersey. I saw my family. We hung out with my mom's. Um, what did we do Friday? My mom cooked for us, and I think that was it. We got home later, and my mom cooked for us. Saturday, we met my dad for breakfast, brunch, lunch, um, and went back to the house. We did some work. I applied some yarn. I put my testing call together. Michael's been running, so he went to do that. And then in the afternoon, we went furniture shopping because we were looking for some bedroom furniture. Honestly, we found some things we liked, and... They're from Pottery Barn and I didn't want to spend that much money, but now looking at other places, I'm finding that a lot of places cost near or about the same um, as Pottery Barn and maybe are not the greatest quality. They're like not real wood or they're plywood or they're partial wood and nothing is like real wood that's dovetail and good quality like I was hoping. Um, and my sister gets a discount from Pottery Barn. So with that discount, we're thinking that that just makes the most sense. But we went and looked at a bunch of different places. We went to HomeSense and HomeGoods and Ashley and Crate and Barrel. Um, we didn't get to Pottery Barn or West Elm, and those are the last two places I would like to just go see some things in per person again and make sure that's what we want before we... Um, check out and solidify that. Um, and then we went to dinner with my nanny met us, but it started snowing at home and it was kind of getting, the roads were getting pretty shaky. Luckily we were out on the highway, so the highway was okay. And then when we got closer, we were only about 10, maybe a 12 minute drive from where my mom lives, but she lives right by the Hudson River and there was no snow. So I don't know if it was an elevation thing or like she was mentioning being by the water, messing with the air, temperature, humidity or something. And there were inches of snow just a few miles away and then nothing by her. So that was wild. Um, then we watched the movies, hang out, hung out. And on Sunday we woke up, had kind of like a casual cozy day. My sister came over, we were like sweatpants only. <laughs> just come hang out we watched movies we played some games I did a lot of spinning so that's where I spun the entire rest of this uh, this melanated boho bay braid the half that I had and I applied this and and then spun these singles I think is what happened or maybe I applied this Saturday something like that I did a lot of spinning and then Michael and I had to head out because we went to see the Giants play the Eagles. I'm a Giants fan. Like, not really. I don't care about football. And Michael is a Philly fan. 
and my dad every year he has giant season tickets gives us tickets to this game and it always seems to be at the end of the year and it always seems to be brutally cold and snowing or raining um and I think every time we've gone the last few years the Eagles beat the Giants and Michael was so happy and I don't really care because I don't care um this year it was not quite that way the Giants beat the Eagles pretty badly not that it mattered the Eagles are going to the playoffs the Giants are done um, but there were quite a lot of people heckling Michael at the game. It was really funny. Um, and that's where I did all of the work on my sock, my stripy sock. And then we got in the car and drove right back here last night. And we were dying to watch Game of Thrones again. We had um, just the last episode of the first season. And we were like, we're, we're going to watch it when we go home, right? And we were both like, yes. But we had some like things to do you know laundry we had to put our unpack get our stuff away um get stuff together for the garbage night all of that but we were just dying to watch so we stayed up later stayed up till midnight <laughs> watching game of thrones um so we'll see what happens tonight and the rest of the nights today i was just dying on almost all day for like four or five hours i stopped for a lunch break you will be very proud of me and now I'm recording this. I threw some chicken in the crock pot, which I think is what was beeping before. I'm gonna make some pot pie for tonight. So I think what I'm going to do when I'm done with this is set up the pot pie, throw it in the oven. I actually like when pot pies and casseroles and things cook and then have some time to like cool down and set a little bit. Like I always think they're better the second day. So maybe I'll make the pot pie and then I will come finish this seal and then I'll work on my red bag card again. And we'll see how much time we have before Michael gets home and then we probably watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> okay, it was so, so much fun hanging out with you and chatting with you about apparently all of the things that I've worked on. Let me know below what you've been working on um, what you think about my FOs, we have a new design, some of my spinning fiber things. I know I had some fiber questions for y'all about some of the monthly colorways and what you're looking forward to, what you're hoping to see maybe in future month themes for Gilmore Girls. Gilmore Girls, Ted Lasso, Schitt's Creek, New Girl, How I Met Your Mother. Ted Lasso, Schitt's Creek, How I Met Your Mother. Friends and New Girl. Is that all of them? That's six. That's all of them. Let me know if there are things you're looking forward to seeing, and I will see y'all next time. Okay. Bye. <laughs>